So I have to be honest when it comes to this book review, and I have to say, guys, there are only a few books in history in my life and probably like your life that are going to change your life forever, and you're always going to be able to remember them because it doesn't feel like they just told you a big secret that you never knew about. And that's exactly what this book, The Millionaire Next Door, actually does, and that's why I care and love this book so much. Now, if you don't know anything about this book, guys, it's a book about who the millionaires in America are, what they do what they don't do, and more importantly, what you can do yourself to become one of them. Now, if you guys don't know me, my name is Tiny Bryson. I'm an accountant, and I upload videos on YouTube every single day. So subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified. On top of that, do me a favor and smash the like button. And here's a question for you guys, okay? By what age exactly do you want to be a millionaire? Comment down below, let me know, and also be specific to how you're going to get there. Comment down below and let me know. And if you guys ask me, when I was in college, my goal was by the hit by the time I hit like 25 years old, I wanted to have like 100k, and that's a great like number. But in reality, it's kind of like too low. And now I'm thinking at my age currently right now, I'm 22. I'm thinking by the time I'm 30, I want to be a millionaire. Now I don't think I'll need that much time. However, if it takes 10, 20. 30, 40 years, it doesn't matter. The whole point is I want financial freedom. However, I do think by the time I'm 30, I should be good to go. So in the next eight years, I should be a millionaire, but comment down below and let me know by what age exactly do you want to be a millionaire and how do you expect to get there? Now, let's talk about the millionaire next door and exactly who the millionaires are and what they do. And I found three little nuggets in this book that I love so much. However, I can only cover so much. That's why I'm only doing three, but there are a ton more in this book if you wanna check it out. So stick around to find out exactly what the three nuggets actually are. Now, the first thing that I learned, guys, was that, you know, appearances are just appearances. They don't symbolize the truth and they don't really mean that much because it just looks like something, but it might be something else. So for example, guys, when I was in college, I used to say all the time, you know, if this professor has a nice suit, they must be rich, must be successful, is that awesome? If I saw a guy with a Rolex, wow, and he has a BMW, wow, oh my gosh, and then in reality, the car is leased, he's not really wealthy whatsoever, and me, myself, I'm not like, you know, an angel here. When I was in college, I had like $300 shoes, $300 belts, um, $500 jeans, a t-shirt that costs like $200. I don't know what was going through my brain, but I assume that, you know, you have to wear your wealth to show that you're wealthy. And in reality, those are just appearances because in my wallet, I had less than $10. So the concept is wealth is not something you see, but something you actually have and you actually build from the ground up. Now, a quick story, guys, here. In the book, he goes into detail to talk about actually a lawyer and actually a wealthy person, okay? One of the millions that she found in this book. Now, the first thing is this, guys. The lawyer was making around $500,000 a year. And you might say, Tommy, that is a lot of money. That must mean that the lawyer is rich, right? He's wealthy. The answer is actually no. Because although the millionaire was only making like around maybe like $100,000 or like $20,000 with his wife together, well, they were almost five times more wealthy when it came to net worth. Well, why? Because the millionaire here was actually living in the same neighborhood he lived all his life, while the lawyer was living in an upper class neighborhood. Because again, he is a lawyer and he needs to like, you know, put up the part. On top of that, guys, the lawyer was driving a foreign car, maybe a Ferrari or a Lambo, foreign car, okay? Now... Guess what happens, okay? He was leasing that vehicle. It wasn't even his. It wasn't like he didn't even own it. But however, the millionaire actually owned his vehicle and it wasn't the year's make at all. It was like five years prior to that and he had that car for like the past five years also. On top of that, the, the, the lawyer was wearing a $5,000 watch. And all the millionaires in this book said, I wouldn't pay one-tenth of that for a watch or anything whatsoever. Now, the concept of this, guys, although the lawyer made a lot of money, he had a reputation to keep up with the nice car, the nice house, the nice wife, the, ni the nice everything, you know, the, the country clubs, all that stuff. But in reality, guess what? That did not equate to wealth because although the lawyer had money, he couldn't survive for six months without being able to cash in a check. Now, the other guy on this side here, the millionaire, well, he didn't look the part. He wasn't wearing the fancy clothes, the fancy suits, the fancy watch, fancy car. However, he had over a million dollars 
worth of net worth. I'm talking about equity. I'm not talking about just like I'm just worth a million dollars with my house here. No, I'm talking about equity. And that's incredible. And that's when I learned that, hey, you don't have to look rich. You just have to be rich. And that's why now, if you ask me, Tommy, you used to buy all these clothes. Well, now I literally shop at Goodwill. I buy $3 t-shirts. I buy $5 jeans. I don't really care whatsoever. It's all about being rich instead of just like looking rich. So quick interruption here before we get to nugget number two, guys. I want to make sure you guys get this book for free because it is a solid book. It's a great book if you ask me. So if you want this book for free, I have a link down below for Audible. You get 30 days for free and two free books for yourself and whoever you want to get a free book to. So if you click the link down below, you sign up, you get this book if you want it and also the 80-20 rule if you want it also or any other book and the platform and they have a ton of them to choose from. So again, link down below for Audible, check it out and get this book right here for free. Now, let's go back to the video and enjoy. Now, the second nugget I found in this book is basically um, security and also a foundation. Now, if you know anything about financial security and also being financially free, financial freedom, well, it's that it's all based around being able to do what you want to do, knowing that your finances won't actually stop you from actually getting to where you wanna go. So for example, guys, if you don't have an emergency fund or any money on the side, and something happens to you, you're kind of screwed, okay? And it's kind of like Murphy's Law that says, you know what, if anything wrong can happen, it will happen, so you wanna make sure you have to prepare for it at all costs. So for example, I thought that I was good to go when I told people like, hey, you know what, I have six months worth of emergencies. Isn't that awesome? And they looked at me, okay, that's awesome, that's great. But after reading this book, I found out that the average millionaire has around 12 years worth of reserves to cover any type of damage that happens to them in their life, where their life happens, they can't walk anymore, anything crazy goes on, okay? Now, the irony in this is, guys, you know, you have doctors, you have lawyers, you have your friends, maybe even you, that if you lose your job and you don't get paid for one paycheck, you can't pay the rent anymore, you can't cover the bills, maybe one month you're like in a shelter now, two months you don't have a car, I said two months, okay, but it's actually two months, you don't have a car, like everything is just gone to ish basically now the problem is guys that the answer here is that you need security you need an emergency fund and you need to be protected you need to protect yourself and prepare for all these things because again murphy law says whatever wrong can happen will happen and that's why you need to be prepared for all this stuff and that's why people ask me tell me what do you think about the earn app what do you think about the dave app all these pay loan apps the answer is it doesn't give you any real value the main problem is that although it covers you for that one week, next week, the next week, the next week after that, it'll be the same problem over and over again. So the true answer is you need to create something that actually helps you and actually covers everything you actually need to cover. And that's why I created a budget called the Simple Budgets. I'm going to link it down below that helps you create an emergency fund, investment accounts. It helps you create everything you want to. Link down below for that budget if you want to use it to give you security and also a solid foundation to financial freedom, which is absolutely the most important thing. Now, the last nugget I actually found in this book, guys, is very simple one to be honest with you but it might sound the most difficult and it's actually the answer to how to become wealthy how to become rich how to be financially free and the answer is very simple more simple than you probably think okay now most people think that financial freedom being rich being wealthy it comes from either an inheritance maybe luck and a career you pick if you pick the wrong career you can't be wealthy you know tell me i'm a science major i just can't do the wealth thing i'm all about this i'm all about that you know in reality, wealth is all wealth, wealth creation is all about three things. F I R. Tell me what is that? It sounds like fur, is that what you're saying? No, I'm saying F for frugality. Frugality is the act of being frugal, living below your means. So if you're making a thousand dollars, don't spend a thousand dollars, spend less than that, keep the rest, invest the rest. And that's why I F I I is for investing. Once you start like making money and holding your money, you want to invest that money not into liabilities like cars because 80% of Americans have cars and I don't know, well, 80% of households in America have cars and I don't know why you would want a liability like that. Invest your money into assets that create income for you and create substance for you. You don't want to put your money in a place that, hey, I bought this iPhone. Or I bought this gal Galaxy, and now I have it. 10 days later, well, it's worth 20% less. Does that make sense? It doesn't. So you want to make sure you invest in assets that produce more money for you. 
okay? Now, the last letter is R. R is for repeat, you know? You live frugally, you invest, you repeat. You live frugally, you invest, you repeat. There's no secret, guys, you know? You keep doing this over and over and over and over again, and eventually, you will be wealthy. And that's a concept. That's what people think, like, you know, tell me, I can't be wealthy because it's gonna take a long time. It might, it might not, but if you don't do this, if you don't live frugally, below your means, and if you don't invest your money, then you better well off just be like, you know, you're just like stuck. You'll be in the rat race forever. And you don't want to do that because although you might be a lawyer, a doctor, whatever you want to be, doctors and lawyers have these problems also. If they can't get paid, they get thrown out the city. And if you can't get paid and you work at McDonald's, then you're kind of screwed over too. So the concept is whoever you are, wherever you are, the entire concept is you have to live frugally below your means and then invest in money and create more wealth for yourself without you actually having to work. Now, the last things I want to talk about in this book, guys, I can't really cover. I'm out of time here, but I'll go over them very quickly. And it's all about, in this book, he teaches you exactly how to live because it talks about how millionaires actually live and how to live in their own neighborhoods for the next, like, like their entire lifetime, which is crazy. On top of that, cars to buy, what cars to buy, what model, what year to buy, because again, millionaires don't really lease on average. They usually buy their cars and they usually buy it used. On top of you have businesses, what businesses actually start, what businesses actually have, what careers actually go into and why. On top of that, they go into, um, well, the overall secrets of how to become a millionaire in America. By the way, this is first generation, not from Rockefeller, not from Ford. No, I'm talking about first generation and how to get there. And that's why I'm following all these rules, okay? I'm following all these rules from all these books, and I'm going to get there before I'm 30 years old. I said 30, but it's going to be probably before that. And guys, comment down below and let me know, do you think this makes sense? Do you think it's just like false? You know, do you think you don't need emergency fund? Do you think you don't need financial freedom? Do you think you don't need money? Do you think having a car is more important than having a house? Comment down below and let me know. And as always, guys, if you enjoyed this video, like the video, really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel, hit the bell so you get notified. And if you want to talk to me one-on-one, -on -one, uno uno, just DM me on Instagram, Tiny Bryson. And on top of if you want to watch all the book reviews I've done so far, well, watch this video right here. It's a playlist on all my book reviews. And if you want to subscribe to the channel right now, subscribe to the channel right here. And I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thanks for watching and peace.